Welcome back to the Colossal Colour Showdown, the show in which we compare a whole lot of colours with the same name. And we go by name because as beginners, we first start buying paints by name rather than pigments. And I want you guys to see what pitfalls they are and what to look out for so that you don't make the same mistakes that I did when I first started buying paints. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at the cobalt violet and also their hues because I think a lot of us are aware that cobalts are not very good for the environment. It's also toxic to us and want to choose a non cobalt version. So we have two colors that are here, which are these two, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, as well as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine genuine colors. My Mary Blue does not have cobalt, violet, anything. So in this episode, it's going to take a break. I do, I promise you, there is a color here. It's so pale though, and we'll come to that as well. In general, I have obviously gone for the colour that is named Cobalt Violet in each brand. We have Daniel Smith, Holbein, Schmincke, Sinelia, Winsor Newton, Core, M. Graham, Roma Schmall. Roma Schmall again because Mission Gold doesn't have a Cobalt Violet either. And I already had both of these Cobalt Violet Light and Cobalt Violet Deep by Roma Schmoss. So I thought, well, rather than keep this blank, I'll fill it with a deep version as well, just for contrast. And then Da Vinci and Old Holland. Where there is a colour name just called Cobalt Violet, I've gone for that. In brands where there is a Cobalt Violet Light and Cobalt Violet Deep, I've gone for the light. And that's purely because most of the brands with just Cobalt Violet they've gone for the cobalt violet light colors and so the color is going to be a little bit more similar for example here the cobalt violet by roman schmaltz is obviously more similar to other colors than the cobalt violet deep is and the only reason why i included the cobalt violet deep in here for roman small is again as i said mission gold didn't have one so i thought i might as well use the space for something else as you can see if you go by just the name cobalt violet rather than looking at the pigments then you're gonna get vastly different range of colors we've got the very light pinky violets to i don't know what that is to the more violet violet color to almost an ultramarine blue violet color as well as very very pale colors and more intense colors cobalt violet genuine in general is a hard to rewet pale low intensity color and so things like here where it's very pale and very hard to rewet is to be expected so if you want a colour that is easier to rewet, I recommend going for more of the honey-based companies such as Roma Schmoll and M. Graham rather than the non-honey versions because they are going to be harder to rewet. Let's talk about hues first. We have two hue colours. One's from Shiminke called the Cobalt Violet Hue and the other one is called the Cobalt Violet Light Hue. The elephant in the room is, of course, the Cobalt Violet Light Hue by Sennelier. It is very easy to rewet, unlike the genuine Cobalt Violets, because it is, it's got nothing to do with Cobalt Violet and it has none of the characteristics that you are expecting to see as a hue colour. To me, and this is controversial because a lot of brands think this is okay. When you create a hue, you want something that behaves in the same way. And this is why I have a problem with companies that make Viridian hue or any other kind of hue where there is granulation in the original color, but there's none in the other color. That's one thing. And then the other thing is when the color, the hue of the hue, is got nothing to do with the genuine colors. I feel like this is a problem child in terms of it being called cobalt violet hue. On its own though, it's a very beautiful color. 
it is this violety, almost queen violet kind of color. And for comparison, just so that, you know, we can talk about this and, and get on with talking about the genuines, I painted some the quinacridone colors that Daniel Smith has. And I only picked Daniel Smith because they have the widest range of queen colors, just to see where we are in terms of hue. And I would say it's somewhere between quinacridone violet and probably quinacridone lilac, but also quinacridone magenta. It's somewhere in between. It is a very beautiful color. It's got some of the violetiness as well as the blueness happening and great as a color. Would have never call this cobalt violet light hue though. PR1 to 2 is of course quinacridone magenta. So it is basically a quinacridone magenta with a little bit of violet and a little bit of white to make it a bit more opaque. So as a hue, it completely fails. Please don't get this thinking it's going to be anything like cobalt violet. It won't. Only choose this color if you like this as a quinacridone color. Shumike has done a much better job of mimicking cobalt violet without using cobalt violet. PV62 is strontium phosphate violet, which basically means it has no cobalt in it. And I think for something that doesn't have cobalt, this is a great mimicking of its granulation. It's very similar to the M. Graham granulation and it is easy to re-wet unlike genuine cobalt violets. The genuine cobalt violets tend to be very difficult to re-wet on the whole. So if you want to go for a hue colour that is a lot closer and if you know that you want something that is closer to a cold violet deep. It is, it's a little bit bluer color. And I have to say, even compared to the more bluer cobalt violets, this is still a little bit bluer. I would say this is closer to ultramarine violet. I would say this is closer to ultramarine violet than cobalt violet deep. But if your environmental concerns and your health concerns overrides slight difference in hue then I can recommend Schmincke. It's definitely recommend Schmincke over the Sennelier. Don't get the Sennelier for it being a cobalt violet hue colour. Now that the hue conversation is over we can take a look at the genuine ones and I would like to roll out two colours already from this selection. One is Da Vinci's cobalt violet. I have no idea what's happened I think it shows up on the camera more than it does with my naked eye. This is very, very pale. And I kind of have to squint to see the color being there. It's so weak. I would rule this out from any running in terms of the best cobalt violet color. For a paint that has barely any color in it, it's also very shiny. I don't know if the camera will catch this, but it is super shiny for not doing much in terms of colour. So let's rule that one out. And then we have Old Holland. Again, I don't know what happened to this one. It was hard to re-wet. Both of these are very hard to re-wet, but so is most of these colours. It smelled really bad. <laughs> it's got that Old Holland smoky smell that I like turned up to 11. And then it has this I don't know if they just had a binder and a lot of it that had a colour of its own, but it's really uneven in colour. You see these yellowy bits coming through here and yeah, it's just not nice and it's very shiny as well. Not as shiny as the Da Vinci, but still quite shiny. I think anyone would have problems dealing with these two and if you have different experience maybe this was just a bad batch of the Da Vinci one then please let me know. I was really surprised because Da Vinci has been on my good books throughout this series. It has performed really well consistently. It has high saturation colors so I don't know what's happened here. If this is like a bad batch, please please let me know in the comments because I would love to know that Da Vinci hasn't let us down this time. In terms of Old Holland, you know how I feel about Old Holland so far, it, they haven't impressed me so I don't feel bad about taking this out of the running. Let's take a look at the genuines. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven colors left and this is copper violet deep so let's just do this there we go i've blocked off the hues and the ones that let's just take out the running ones as well as the cobalt violet deep now so that you can have a better look at the range of colors you can get with genuine cobalt violets in terms of hue we have four that are very pinky violet i would say this is more like a violety pink as in it's mostly pink with a little bit of violet rather than the other way around and then we have one that's somewhere in the middle between a cobalt violet light and a cobalt violet deep and then we have one that is very clearly a lot more cobalt violet deep hue than a light hue they are all granulating they also suffer from a little bit of streakiness because when you paint with cobalt violet you'll notice that the, the paint is a little bit thicker in texture than most other paints and i think that's because you just need so much binder to hold on to such heavy pigments as cobalt violet we have three different kinds of pigments we have pv14 and then pv47 and then three pv49s all of which are cobalt violet based it's just slight variations on the cobalt violets we have two colors out of these that are very hard to remove: the Daniel Smith one and the Core one. I would say that only go for these two if you're totally in love with the hue and you're willing to put up with the hard to rewet. I usually wet the paints before I do the swatching, so it's pre-wet and it's still very hard to rewet. It was so hard to rewet, I wrote that down twice on this swatch. So only buy these if you are willing to put the time in to re-wet these paints because you're so in love with the hue. However, I would say that you have pretty much the same hue with the Windsor Newton one and the Roman Small one. So you don't really have to put up with these two just because you love the colour because you have these two. I, I actually can't believe I'm recommending Windsor Newton for once. Somebody actually commented on another video going, why do you hate Windsor Newton? I don't. I just... Other brands are better, but in this case, Windsor Newton does shine in that it's easy to rewet and it's the same color as these. I would also say that Roma Small is great. However, I'd say Windsor Newton, it's a little bit stronger in color. It's got, it's more intense, whereas the Roma Small has a more even look to the swatch. So it depends on what you're going for. If you can deal with the unevenness the patchiness because maybe you're really good at painting or you're using better quality paper then you're probably not going to get this streakiness that we get on the fabriano academia paper remember i always choose cheap papers for these tests so that you can see the paints at its worst and if it behaves well on this paper then it's going to behave really well on whatever paper you choose at home and therefore if it can be this smooth compared to the other colors on this paper for roman small you're going to have a really fun time getting smooth washes of cobalt violet on your paint however it's less granulating than the other colors as well so there's a little bit of this six of one and half dozen the other and then these two, both very easy to re-wet, M. Graham one especially, these two are going to be re easy to re-wet because they both have honey in their paint. But these two are slightly different hue to what you would be expecting from a cobalt violet or a cobalt violet light. As I said, this is a little bit in between, say, colours like this. You can see that this is these two. In between these two kind of thing so if you don't want all the way pink but you don't want all the way violet like blue violet then i would recommend the holbein one it's easy to rewear it's a nice middle ground color between the two you then have the more bluey cobalt violet here if this is the hue you're looking for then this is a great color because it's very easy to rewear it's heavily granulating it's a well-behaved color Let's look at the information. We have the information of characteristics and price and other colors that are available in the range. First of all, let's look at the prices and the cheapest one through the whole thing is the Sennelier one, but obviously this is a hue and it looks nothing like cobalt violet. So let's rule that one out. And then when we look at the cheapest genuine cobalt violet, then surprisingly, 
it is the Daniel Smith's Cover Violet. In terms of the most expensive, again, surprisingly, it's not Core, because Core is usually the most expensive color in this range for me to be able to buy in the UK. It's actually Holbein, which is ironic because when you buy, and this is why I say don't buy Holbein unless you can get it cheap in Asian countries, like you have friends in Asia or you're going over there, then really stock up because it's very affordable over here, there. But over here, it's the most expensive cobalt violet. Cobalt violet in general is gonna be expensive. It's an expensive pigment. And so if you love this color, be prepared to pay for this color other colors that brands have Dennis Smith has a cobalt violet deep which is pv14 it's going to look like that more bluey violet color as well as cobalt blue violet which is a mix of pv28 and pv19 then schmincke has no cobalt violet genuines Sennelier has a cobalt violet deep hue again this is pr122 it's it's a quinacridone magenta and then obviously we covered that Roman Schmort has both the Cobalt Violet Light and the Cobalt Violet Deep. Old Holland also has a Cobalt Violet Dark, which is again a mixture of different pigments. Three different pigments, PB73, PB23 and PV19. It's really interesting though that M. Graham has classified this colour as non-granulating because I would say it's very granulating. Let's look at the opacity of these colours next. And these two, unsurprisingly, it being very pale as well, there's nothing, there's nothing here like all the other colours. All the other colours have a lot of opacity to them, especially around here and here. Now we can't tell if that's just because pigment is opaque or because they have fillers in. There's no way of telling. With the Snellier one, obviously it's a hue, but we also know that it has PV6 in it, which is gonna make it more opaque anyway. I am actually quite surprised at Windsor Newton just how opaque this is though. This almost feels like there's fillers happening here. Again, I'm just like guessing. This isn't a fact. Please don't think, Oh, Otto says Windsor Newton has fillers in. I'm not saying that. I'm just really surprised at how opaque this is. And same with the Holbein one and a little bit with here, but this is a bit more natural than here. This is the worst one in terms of opacity. And yes, Cobalt Violet is gonna be semi-transparent, semi-opaque at best, but this just feels, these two just feels a little bit weird to me. For the most transparent, one that has a decent hue, go for Daniel Smith. For most opaque one, go for Windsor and Newton. They're both similar in hue, as you can see here. They're similar in hue, so you can choose between a more transparent one or a more opaque one, depending on what you're looking for. And lastly, we'll take a look at the lift and glazing power. Obviously, let's get the elephant out of the room first. Snellia. It's heavily staining. Of course it is. It's a quinacridone magenta mixed with other colors. It's going to behave completely differently to everyone else. So let's ignore this one. In terms of cobalt violet, because it's a low staining color, so it should be very easy to lift in general. These two were very easy to lift, but I mean, come on, it's going to be easy to lift a color that pale. This one, very clear, crisp line in the lift. You always know how if something is really easy to lift, if they have very crisp line in where you've lifted and you get that here as well as here. In general, most of these are easy to lift. The exceptions I would say are these two. The Covert Violet by M. Graham is quite staining, very surprisingly staining for a cobalt violet. I'm expecting this kind of look here rather than this. And same goes for the cobalt violet deep by Roma Small, but the cobalt violet light is fine. It's very easy to lift. In terms of glazing, because it's a easy to lift color, it's not gonna stain the paper as much. So I'm expecting it to be not good glazers in general granulating colors are not the best glazers you don't see the layers clearly and the colors lift up very quickly 
and that's true for most of this i'm really surprised at how bad this was for glazing considering this is the most staining out of the genuine copper violets wasn't expecting it to be this bad i would say this is one of the worst ones out of the lot same here very uneven color so you don't see the layers very easily so even though i recommended Winsor Newton earlier as an easy to rewet pink violet color in terms of evenness it's so messy so for that I wouldn't recommend that I would only recommend this color for how easy it is to rewet for this hue rather than how flat and smooth they go down on paper in terms of smoothness of going down on paper Roma Schmoll is very nice. So is Daniel Smith. I know it's really hard to rewet, but once you get it there, once you get the consistency, it's a very well behaving paint. It's very smooth on paper. And so is the Roma Schmoll. With the cover violet light, you, you can still see the unevenness of some bits are very pink and violet and some bits are very, very yellow. And the same in the glazing, where the paint is thick, the yellowiness comes through on paper. And it's a pretty color. It, I'm not saying it's a bad color. It's just not what you're expecting from a cover violet, which is a consistent hue that is just granulating rather than this changey color. I mean, it's a lovely, lovely color. I'm sure someone can create beautiful floral painting with this color, just not what we're expecting from a cover violet. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at more features like gradation, how it reacts to salt and how it mixes with other colors. And I'll let you know which one of these colors I think would, that I would recommend for you to buy. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for all your support in subscribing and commenting and sharing. You guys are making a huge difference to my numbers. Please keep doing what you're doing. It is coming back. The view numbers are coming back to this channel. I am so grateful for your help. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye.